Welcome to lab 10. In this lab, we'll try to understand how we can use NTD framework with MVC. But before we proceed with this video, my suggestion is to go and see the NTD framework questions and answers video series to have a better understanding of EF. Uh, remember that this video will not explain NTD framework in details, but is limited that how we can integrate NTD framework with MVC. So it is not going to go uh, in detail about how to use entity framework. So if you are interested to know in detail about entity framework, which is very essential in MVC, my suggestion is to go and see the EF questions and answers video series. So great. So we are at a stage where we have a customer screen. This customer screen does validations. It does validations both at the server side as well as client side. But how can fish stay without a water? How can kids stay without his mother? <laughs> and how can an application be complete without using a database? This customer screen here is not complete without interacting with the database. So in order to interact with the database, we will be using entity framework. So the first thing is we need to go and create a customer table uh, in which we want to uh, store this customer code and customer name, right? So uh, what I've done here, you can see that I have a very simple uh, customer DB here. So on this customer DB, I'm going to go and create a new table with two fields. One is customer code and a customer name. So I will have one field here, customer code. For now, I'll just make it NVAR care of 50. And then I have customer name. And where of 50, I'll just name this as TPL customer. Great. So in order to use entity framework in a project, we need to reference it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and use the NuGet uh, package manager to add reference uh, to entity framework to our project, right? In case you are new to NuGet, my suggestion is to go and watch the NuGet video, which we have on Questpon VD, which will help you to understand NuGet. But in short, NuGet is nothing but uh, it's a tool, you know, by which you can go online, search the component, what you want to add reference to your project and just add it. So you don't have to go to the site, download the DLL and do all those things. So at this moment also, I don't want to go into the complication of searching entity framework, downloading it, adding, referencing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the NuGet package manager here and uh, I'm going to go online. So this needs an internet connection and I'm going to search entity framework. Oh, there it is. It's already searched. Okay. So I'm going to go and search entity framework there it is now you can see it's clearly written over here that entity framework is the microsoft's recommended way of accessing data okay so in other words you know entity framework is nothing but it's a um, it's a framework you know by which you can go and access databases like sql server or you can go and access oracle etc so i'm going to go and install this so there it is so the entity framework component has been added to my project just to quickly check you know if uh, it is added or not you can see that in the references i can see the entity framework uh, assembly or i can see the reference of the entity framework so this confirms that yes entity framework has been added to my project great so we are all set so we have the entity framework we have our screen right so now it is just a matter of using entity framework and connecting this screen to our SQL server database. Right. Now I have always been a fan of a uh, three layer architecture, the fun, the benefit of dividing the project into user interface, a middle layer and data access layer has its own great advantages because your project is divided into sections. So you can manage them separately. You can organize them properly. And that makes your system much easy to understand and maintain in the coming times. Now, in our current MVC project, we almost have all the sections of three layer architecture, but what we don't have is a data access layer. So we already have this enter customer UI. We have the customer class, which is our middle layer. But what is pending is the data access layer. Now, in case you have hard time understanding the mapping between three layer architecture and MVC, I would suggest you to go through the why MVC video, which we have created in lab six where we have explained the mappings and where we have talked, you know, how uh, MVC has evolved. 
So let us go ahead and create this missing section of data access layer. And to create this data access layer, we will be using entity framework components, you know, which we have just referenced via NuGet. Now, uh, entity framework has many ways by which you can use in a project. So first is you can use the wizard and generate code. The second is POCO and the last one is code first. So in the wizard approach, you know, we rely on automation of EF. In the second POCO approach, we do semi automation where some code is generated by the entity framework and some code we write. While the last code first is where we use the bare minimum DLLs of EF and do the data access. So in case you are not aware of these approaches, my suggestion is to go and see the entity framework questions and answers video series where we have explained each one of these approaches uh, in a much in-depth manner. Now this series uh, is targeted, you know, so that you become a true MVC professional. So this video series, what we have here, it is targeted so that you become a true MVC professional. And for professional MVC projects, people use code first. Because in code first, we do not have any kind of auto generated behind code and we have complete control on our data access methodology. So in order to go and create your data access layer or in order to go and use code first. So what I'll do is let me go and create a folder here. So I'm going to go and add a new folder and this folder I will name it as data access layer. So uh, all the data access layer classes will lie in this folder. So I'm going to go and add a new folder here. So let's, let's say this folder name is data access layer, right? So inside this data access layer, I'm going to go and add a, a class file. So let me add a new item here. So we'll, we'll go and add a class file and uh, this class file, I will name it as uh, uh, this is customer data access layer. Okay. Now in order to go and uh, create this data access layer class by using entity framework, we need to inherit from the DB context class of entity framework library. Uh, now you can see here, I have inherited from the DB context class, but it is saying that the appropriate namespaces are missing. So what we can do is we can go here, click at the left hand side of this error sign. And you can see that he says that please use system.data.entity. So that namespace, you know, has this class. So there it is. Great. So in short, the expectation is that this customer DAL class will go to the database, fetch the customer data and give us customer objects, right? So in other words, it is going to give us customer collection, right? So we need to go and reference here. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here, okay, using, so here I'm going to go and reference the models and we will say that this customer data access layer here will return a collection of customer objects, right? Now this DB set class is a generic class which belongs to the uh, customer data access layer and uh, this DB set class is very specific to entity framework. So whenever entity framework wants to return out a customer object or supplier objects or any kind of table records, it is the type of DB set. So in case you are new to generics and in case you are new to entity framework, my Suggestion is to go and see the generic videos from the .NET fundamental section. My suggestion is, is to go and see the entity framework questions and answers video series from the entity framework section. Right. <clears throat> but now the next question is, you know, how does this customer data access layer know that your SQL server is located here? Your table is DBL customer, your database is customer DB. In other words, you know, this customer data access layer needs to needs to know the connection string, you know, where the SQL server is, um, where the table is, etc. Right. So let us go to the web.config file of our project. So you can see that we have the web.config file of a project here in the MVC. So there is a web config file. And as I've told previously that basically um, MVC and web forms, they all belong to ASP.NET. So these concepts like session variables, web.config files, those have not changed actually. Right. So in this section, <clears throat> we'll go and add a connection string section here. 
and in this uh, we need to go and provide the connection string now uh, the name of the connection string you know should be the same as your data access layer name class so in this case you know my context class is by the name customer dal so uh, we need to go and provide the same name here in the connection string right and uh, the connection string value now how do we get the connection string value right so in order to get the connection string value the most easiest way is go to server explorer here so here in the server explorer let us add uh, the SQL server name here where our server is located our database at this moment is a uh, customer DB right so I have added the database to our server explorer so in order to get the connection string you can right click on this database name here what has been added go to properties and in the properties you can find that there is a connection string property so control C this right and copy this over here great so you can see that even the connection string has been added uh, to the web config file name uh, also we need to go and provide the provider name okay so if you see over here we have one more important uh, property which we need to give the provider name and the provider name is system.data.sql client great so you can see that i have added the connection string in my web config file the most important thing here is that the connection string name should be the same as the data access layer name class name or whatever class name you have given here of the context class it should be the same name here okay nice so we are almost set but we need to do one more thing here if you look um, to this name here of the class it is customer class right and if you look to our table name right so if you look if you go to our database in our database our table name is TBL customer now how does entity framework understand that he has to go and load this customer class from this TBL customer because it is very much possible that you can have other tape other name here of customer table like must be customer one or customer two right so how does he identify that I have to go and load this class with from this table here called as TBL customer right so for that we need to go and provide the mappings as well so we need to go and tell entity framework that this customer class here should be mapped with this TBL customer so for that we have to go and say here override on model creating so in order to go and uh, do the mapping we have to use this model builder object here and uh, we have to say here model builder dot entity so dot entity uh, dot customer so this customer class is going to be mapped to the table tbl customer great so nice so we have the customer data access layer here we have the customer class so everything is set so let's go back to our customer controller here so in this customer controller if you remember you know the end user was going and filling that customer code and customer name and he was clicking the submit button right once he clicks the submit button the, you know we are we were going and running the validations here and in case everything is fine if the model state is valid we were actually going to the customer screen so over here what we'll do is we will go and insert the customer object to the database using the entity framework dial which we have just created okay so the first thing is we need to go and import this uh, data access layer here using hello world dot data access layer great and over here I'll say customer data access layer dial is equal to new customer data access layer and then we'll say here dial dot customers dot add so add this customer object which has got flourished from the screen here so you can see here this customer obj here which has got filled here add that customer object to the collection and to do the to, to submit this changes to the database you have to say here save changes 
So you can see here, we have created the object of data access layer. We have added the customer object to the collection and then we have done save changes. Uh, please go again. I'm repeating. Please go and see the entity framework questions and answers video series. You will understand, you know, why this code I have written here. Okay. But in short, uh, this customer data access layer here will help us to add, remove, update objects, you know, to the data access to the, to the SQL server. So this customers dot add actually does a in memory updation. Okay. This is actually in memory and um, when you call save changes here, he actually does a physical commit. So we are all set. So let us do a control F5. So there my application is running. So let me see if I can go and insert this record. And remember, um, you know, we had given a format of the customer code. So let us follow that format. Uh, three letter characters, four letter number. Let me click on submit and uh, and i have errors <laughs> and it is good that we have errors because um, i don't want to show you all gloomy gloomy things here and it is good that we have got an error so the error says that customer has no key defined nice so in case you have gone through the uh, entity framework questions and answers video series one of the very important thing of entity framework is or any orm is that you need to have a key okay so we need to define that one of the fields from this is a key so what I'll do is I'll say here that this customer code is the key. Okay. So entity framework or any ORM like Hibernate or uh, uh, Link U or entity framework, they always need a key. If they don't have a key, they don't know how to proceed, right? So I've done that. Let me build this. Let me again go and run my application. So let me do a control F5 again. So there the application is running. So I'll say here Raju. Uh, INV1001 or possibly I'll just say CUS1001 remember these are the validations I'll click on submit mm -hmm. now let us go back to the database and see that if this record has been inserted or not so I'm going to go and click on this SQL here and there it is nice isn't it wow <laughs> so we have hit this uh, button here. So as soon as we hit the submit button here, it has gone ahead. It has used our data access layer. So very quickly, it has used this data access layer code here. The the object here created the object of data access layer. It added the customer object and it saved this record into SQL Server. Very nice. So great. So what have we achieved in this lab? So in this lab, what we have done is uh, basically we have used Entity Framework. And we have used code of code first approach to make an insert into the database. So what happens? The first hit comes to the controller. The controller uh, goes and uh, gives the data entry page of the customer code and customer name. The end user goes and fills the customer code and customer name and he hits the submit button. And the submit action of the controller is called. The submit action first thing is he goes ahead and he fills this customer object. In other words, he interacts with the model, fills the customer object. This customer object is then validated by using the validation attributes what we had that is data annotations, right? After that, he uses the customer data access layer, which is nothing but our entity framework context object, uses that object to go and make an insert into SQL server. And finally, he goes and returns the customer view. So in this lab, you know, we have created a data access layer and we have done database interaction. So this completes our three hours of MVC lecture. Oof. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have more 13 hours pending and uh, I'm not giving up until I make you a MVC uh, professional developer. So be with me. I know that it is boring. It is tiring. But once you complete this complete lecture series, right? You know, you are ready to execute any MVC professional project. And in case you have any problems, you know, that's my email address. That's our phone number. That's our Skype ID feel free to mail, feel free to ping out and we'll see that how we can help you out. Thank you so much.